Thanks for checking out this video. So this is one of my kind of opinion videos where it's a little more off the cuff. Although for this one in particular, I did put some thought into it ahead of time because I needed to pick out some films. So obviously, this is where I'm going to be talking about, briefly, five amazing horror films that I may never watch again. And I'm not just going to name them. I'm going to tell you why I may never watch them again. Now, it's not a definitive. I could potentially watch them again in the future. But at the moment, I kind of feel like, I don't necessarily have a desire to watch them again, and I will get into the reason why, even though they are amazing films. Uh, and these are not in any particular order. It's just five of the ones that I can definitely think of. So the first one I put down was the film Martyrs, the original French version, not the American remake. I never watched the American remake. I heard it's not very good, especially in comparison to the original film. I actually do own Martyrs back here. Uh, I had bought it on a whim. I had heard crazy things about it and just straight up bought it on DVD. So gives you an idea of when I bought it. It was a long time ago. Uh, but the reason I may never watch this film again, even though it is a phenomenally done film, is the brutality. It is a very brutal, very intense film like Pascal Laguier does. He also has a very similar feel in his film Incident in a Ghostland, which I think is still on the Shutter streaming service if you have interest in checking that out. But Martyrs is just so brutal and so violent uh, that I remember the first time I watched it, which was the only time I've watched it, actually, thinking, oh my gosh, if, if this brutality is not for something, if this isn't really going to an actual purpose in the end of the film, I'm going to be really pissed off at this film because it's almost too much. So for that reason, just the intensity of the brutality and everything, I, I, it is a film I may never watch again, although I say that, but then some people might want me to review it, so then maybe I would watch it maybe one more time, but not really interested because, I don't know, I, I feel like you have to be in the kind of right mindset to handle something like that, and I don't know if I feel like I'm ever really in that mindset. I don't know, but I'd love to hear other people's opinions on the film. Uh, another film is The Lighthouse. That's the A24 film with uh, Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson. Wonderful film. Amazing film. Loved watching it the first time. Now, I know some people may be like, I don't really want to watch it again because it's in black and white. Because I know some people like that. But no, that that's not it. For me, it's the way the intensity of the film and the craziness of the film just continually kind of slowly ratchets up. It feels so unhinged, it feels so out of control, and so weird that another one of those things, like you have to be in the right headspace for the film, and I just don't know if I'm ever going to be in that headspace to handle that film again, because now I obviously know what the film is like. Um, so yeah, anytime you are revisiting a film like that, you kind of think to yourself, do I want to watch this film right now because I know what it's like and it's crazy and it's unhinged and it's, you know, it just keeps building and I just don't see myself going back to the lighthouse for that reason. So that re leads me to my third one, which is Hereditary. Uh, once again, wonderful film. Saw this one in the theater. Tony Collette's performance, amazing. I actually love Ari Aster and I look forward to everything that Ari Aster is going to be putting out. Loved Midsommar as well. And Hereditary was phenomenal. It blew me away in the theater, uh, even though after after I was done watching it, I heard a lot of people getting up and leaving saying, that sucked, that was stupid. And I'm like, what? Did we just watch the same film? I love this. So I understand some people really hate the film, but I thought it was amazing. I love the types of films that just lead you, leave you kind of breadcrumbs. And then when you're done, you have to kind of put everything together like a puzzle and figure out, What's really going on here? And I love how they did that with Hereditary. Now, the reason I may never watch Hereditary again is the intensity. Kind of like Martyrs, uh, not for the brutality like for Martyrs, but the intensity uh, in Hereditary. I don't have a big problem with, you know, the gore or the kills in the film. It's just there's this huge intensity to the film that just keeps going and going and going, and you feel it. And now it's because of the performances, it's because of the way everything's written, and it's because of the music, and the way it's shot as well. Just every aspect of it just makes you feel the stress and intensity as the film goes on until that big finish. And once again, I just don't know if I'm going to be in that situation that I'll feel like handling something like that again. Uh, it's it's a lot to to go through, like it was the first time I saw it. 
But uh, yeah, it's a phenomenal film. I just don't know if I'm going to be doing that. Now, the fourth one is The Killing of a Sacred Deer, uh, another A24 film with uh, Colin Farrell in it, and um, I think Nicole Kidman is also in it. But wonderful film, amazingly done once again. But it's so odd. Like, everything feels detached in the film. All the characters feel very detached from one another. They don't feel very human, so that's kind of a weird thing that is hard to enjoy at times. But um, it, my biggest reason is it just has this very unsettling feeling throughout the entire film. And once again, it's, a, it's another one of those things where it's like, I'm not sure if I see myself being in the headspace, or I feel like I could handle that again of just feeling unsettled for the one and a half hour or so the film is. Uh, they did an amazing job. I think it was uh, Lanthimos, Yorgos Lanthimos, who did that film, uh, did an amazing job of just keeping it very unsettling for the entire portion of the runtime. It's, it's kind of hard to figure out how that was uh, achieved because it's done in many ways, ways. I think part of what I was saying about the characters not feeling very human and feeling very detached kind of emotionally from everything, but it's also the actions in the film and the idea behind what's going on, uh, the music, filmmaking, all that stuff. So I just don't know if I see myself in that in that headspace yet again. So that's why Killing of a Sacred Deer may never happen for me again. And then that leads me to my final one, which is The Exorcist. The original The Exorcist. Now this is not one that I put on the list because I feel like, oh, it's too scary, it's too intense, it's too brutal, or anything like that. It's because I don't like William Friedkin. Um, I watched The Exorcist once a long time ago just to make sure that I've seen it. Wonderful film, amazing film. I think a lot of people agree on that. The majority of people agree on that. But I think William Friedkin is a horrible human. Um, he. This is just based on my personal opinion. I've talked to um, someone else in the horror community uh, who is known, who also kind of alluded to Friedkin not being a very good person in person. I'm sorry to say person numerous times. But uh, one of the big things that really that really sealed this for me that I don't want to watch The Exorcist again was the documentary about The Exorcist. Uh, it's actually, it's the one that's on Shudder. It's Leap of Faith, uh, William Friedkin on The Exorcist, where he just you know, kind of verbally masturbates the whole time about what a wonderful human being he is and how he's the most amazing person for doing The Exorcist. And then he talks a lot of crap about other people in his film life and other people who worked on The Exorcist and seems to be kind of proud of some terrible things that he did to people and the way he treated people on the set. The other thing is a lot of people probably know that Linda Blair was legitimately injured because they went over the top with scenes they were doing with her. And Friedkin really has seemed to not really care about that. He also talks in that documentary about other not very not nice things that he had said has said and done to people, especially when making that film. And he's a, he's not a good person. So I don't really feel a need to watch The Exorcist again because I feel like if I'm watching it, I'm just going to be remembering that documentary and how terrible of a person he is and how Linda Blair was legitimately injured during the filming. So that's kind of my reason for not feeling like I'm, I'm going to watch The Exorcist again, but yeah. But I am very curious, you know, obviously that finishes my list. I'm very curious to find out if there are any films for people out there that fit in this category for you. Are there any films you're like, wow, that's a phenomenal film, but I don't think I'll ever watch it again. Now, maybe it's for certain reasons, because I know for me, there it, it'll be a situation where there are probably a lot of amazing films that I might not ever watch again, just because I keep wanting to watch new films. So I may, just may never get around to it, even though I may want to at some point. But maybe for you, there is something out there. Maybe there's nothing. And there are also films that I have not seen before that I've heard are pretty intense and crazy that I'm, I know if I watched them once, I probably would not want to watch them again. So they would end up on my list instead of some other ones on there. Like I've never seen a Serbian film. I know for a fact, I probably would not want to watch that again. I've never watched Cannibal Holocaust. I know for a fact, if I watched the unsanitized version, I would probably never want to watch that again. I, I don't even watch, want to watch either of those two films a first time. I don't have a desire. So 
but go ahead and put it in the comments. Are there any films that you think are amazing, but you don't think you'll ever watch them again? And tell me why. I'm very, very interested. Or maybe you're one of those people you can comment and say, you know what? I would watch anything again, and I'm down with that. So, especially if it's an amazing film. But do me another favor, hit that subscribe button if you can for me, and you can, because it literally takes you a second. It costs you no money, and it's totally painless, and it really helps me out. I'm trying to grow this channel, grow this nerdy horror community, because that's the reason I started it, because I want to talk to other nerdy horror people, because where I live, I don't really have anyone I can talk to like this about horror. So this is my way to create the community. So if you go ahead and subscribe, I would be appreciative really does drive me in continuing with these videos. Um, but regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to check this video out. And until next time, keep it brutal.